Hello, my name is Kevin Breslin with Imaginet Technologies. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at AutoCAD Civil 3D. AutoCAD Civil 3D is a purpose-built building information modeling solution for civil engineering. Civil 3D can help users gain the competitive advantage of BIM to deliver more innovative project solutions. The software creates coordinated, data-rich models that enable you to conduct analysis from the earliest stages of design and provides users the ability to better visualize and simulate real-world appearance, performance, costs, and the ability to document designs more accurately. Civil 3D produces a single model with intelligent and dynamic data enabling you to more quickly make design changes at any stage of the design process. Let's start by taking a look at processing survey data. In Civil 3D we have the ability to import a variety of survey data from fieldbook files to ASCII files of a variety of formats. So we're going to start by importing a fieldbook file and in this case here we're going to apply it to an existing project. We'll choose the file. Next we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a network. And a network is basically a collection of field observation data that will interact. So in this case here we're going to call this control. And this will be our terrestrial control. These are the settings that control the import process and all of the things that control the appearance and the general behavior of the geometry. So as you can see here, having imported this file, we have the points with their descriptions, the symbology associated with the points, of course the point information, and then the line work itself. The line work is based on the line coding, the field coding for the lines. Now we could continue from this point and go ahead and build a surface, but what we're going to do is we're going to add some additional data. So we're going to go back to importing survey data for the same project, but this time we're going to choose to bring in a ASCII file. And in this case here we have two TXT files, which are really uh, coordinate files from GPS. And we're going to go ahead and import those. You can choose any file format you want, including your own. And here we can parse that description. In this case, we're going to create a new network because the GPS data may interact differently than the terrestrial data, and we may want to manage those things differently for a variety of reasons. So again, we control the options that will dictate the appearance of the geometry. And because we have some redundancy with points that have already been identified from the terrestrial survey, uh, the program will ask us how we want to resolve these conflicts. In this case here, we'll choose to overwrite the definition of a point that was already observed. The result is the point information along with all of the line work, the symbology, and the basic topo data. Now, we could from this point continue and make a surface, or if we find that we need to do some editing, we could go back and make changes to individual components or the survey data as a whole. So let's say, for example, we want to build a surface from this. Well, we can do that. We can also use the point groups here, which is a mechanism for filtering data, to control the display of the object. So let's start by moving the trees to the top of the list and then uh, basically weeding out the display so we're only seeing the uh, pertinent information which would be our control points and our tree descriptions. So as you can see here the symbology is the same but the descriptions have changed. Now because the objects themselves, the label objects included, are intelligent, it's simply a matter of using AutoCAD grip edits, in this case here, to manipulate the location of the geometry. And because of the intelligence of the geometry, we can also go ahead and we can select things such as line work if we wanted to make changes, and the program gives us the means to edit the observational data within the program through the context-based menu. And you can see here when you select an object that the program is intelligent and displays the applicable commands that would relate to the thing or things that you've selected. In this case here, we're going to edit the survey figure data. And we could choose based on the observations uh, that, uh, that this set up where this point came from and make changes to it. We can see that interactively on the screen with the, uh, the graphical overview. And once you've made whatever changes you need to make and you think, okay, we're ready to go ahead and proceed and make a surface from this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's actually go back to survey. And what we'll do is we're going to tell the program we want to take all of the line work, the figures that have been generated from the survey data, and we want to create break lines from those. Now, each break line has been identified in the list. You'll see that most of them have a yes for the qualifier, whether or not there are potentials for creating a surface. But some things such as overhead utilities and some types of geometry, paint stripes and whatnot, you wouldn't necessarily want to use as break lines for your surface. So we can set this up ahead of time in the program. 
So we're going to go ahead and create a surface, call it existing ground. We can choose the style for the surface. And we're going to go ahead and process those, uh, those survey figures. And just like that, we've got an existing ground surface built from the three-dimensional data derived from the survey figures. And if we want to take a look at it in 3D here, again, we could choose options from the ribbon or we can right click and choose in this case here to look at it using the object viewer. And you can see that we do indeed have a three dimensional surface representing the site. Um, if we look closely, you can actually see the face of the curbs based on the shots, uh, as well as the basic topography. Now, in this case here, if we want to supplement this and add additional data with our point groups we had mentioned before, not only are the points separated by specific criteria, um, we can use that criteria to qualify points that are valid for building a surface. So we're going to add spot shots or ground shots. So points that meet that criteria, we're going to add that to the surface, and it'll give us a little more refinement and a little smoother appearance to our surface. Now, once that's done, we can continue and we can add labels. Now in Civil 3D, again, adding labels is as simple as touching the object. And then in the context menu, you get a list of all of the applicable commands for editing and manipulating the geometry. In this case here, we're going to add labels using one of the many methods. We'll go ahead and use multiple contours. And we simply strike a line through the points that we want the contour labels to appear. And when we do that, if we go ahead and zoom in here, you can see that the labels have been added to the contours. Now, the contour labels are objects, just like the contours are, and if I decide I need to make changes to those, in this case here we're going to actually edit the surface style itself and add a little more density to the contours. This is pretty flat, so instead of one foot intervals we'll go with 0.5. We'll also increase the smoothing of the surface. And just like that, as long as it takes to, to say smoothing of the surface and pick the OK button, the program is able to give us a new depiction of the surface. And the labels, of course, are following suit. If we decide we want to change the location of the labels, again, they're objects, so it's a matter of pick and drag. And as you can see here, the labels update automatically. In this example, we'll take a closer look at the interaction between the objects in Civil 3D and how they, how they really help to differentiate the program and make it more productive than anything else on the market. So in this case here, what we have is an existing ground surface defined in alignment, which represents the proposed center line of the road. We also have, in our profile view, a sample of the existing ground surface and then a proposed vertical alignment. What we've done is we've taken this information the profile information proposed, the horizontal geometry that represents the alignment, and then cross-sectional information that we apply in the form of uh, assemblies that are ultimately defining this road. So this road is fairly a decent way along the process of the design. Now, in most programs, if I were to go and make a change to the fundamental geometry, in this case you're grabbing this alignment, and literally changing the course of the alignment and the length of the alignment, that would change everything. It's going to change the length of the alignment, the station labeling, uh, the entire process. So I'm going to go ahead and make a physical change to this, which would, in most cases, require an extensive amount of rework. In Civil 3D, this literally takes a second or two to reprocess, recalculate, not only the alignment geometry and its associated labels for the stationing, but the way that the cross-sectional information is applied to the alignment and how it relates to the proposed vertical alignment, all of the labels, the volumes, the tables, everything is automatically updated. That's the intelligence and the power of Civil 3D and how the objects differentiate themselves with their ability to anything on the market. This allows your users to be far more productive, to get the job done more quickly with lesser chance of omissions and errors due to rework, which is a common practice in engineering. Uh, very rarely is something designed the first time perfectly. It requires changes, and Civil 3D really excels in that. Let's make another change here. I'm going to go to this proposed vertical alignment, and we're going to grab this, uh, this curve here, and I'm going to change the length of the curve. Now, I could do that in a tabular way, or in this case here, you can see I did it graphically. And I physically changed that. That changes the entire design, and that change, again, is being pushed through all of the related objects. Let's do something a little more substantial. I'm going to go ahead and change the proposed vertical uh, PVI here. So for the proposed design, we're going to raise it up a bit so that we have quite a bit more fill. And when I make this change, again, if you watch the uh, the plan view, it's going to redesign the corridor, which in turn changes the grading and the daylighting to the underlying surface, which in turn changes the contours, the volumes, the entire design. So this is another great example of how the dynamic and intelligent geometry within Civil 3D allows users to work much more efficiently. Once the program has been configured and set up to meet your organization's needs, Civil 3D really has the ability to perform in a way beyond 
that of any other program on the market. In addition to the functionality within Civil 3D for design and engineering, Civil 3D also ships with accompanying analysis programs for storm and sanitary design. In this example here we have a storm network and in Civil 3D we have its associated catchment areas that we can tie together to create the basis of a design for, for a storm sewer system. In this example here what we can do is we can port this data into the storm and sanitary analysis program that allows us to perform much more complex design and analysis of sanitary and storm sewer systems. This information can then be brought back into Civil 3D to create an updated network of storm or sanitary design. Thank you for your time. If you have any further questions about Civil 3D or the services here at Imagine It, please contact us at www.imagineit.com. Thank you.